On March 4, 1887, the Nebraska legislature passed LB 247, creating a veterans home in Grand Island. This facility serves the needs of every veteran by providing high quality services and holistic long-term care in a home-like veterans community. Today, this is the Grand Island Veterans Home. As an entity of the Department of Public Institution System, the Grand Island Veterans Home can best be described as a city. With a fully staffed medical center, members have 24-hour on-site health care. The campus also houses an all-faiths chapel, a library containing volumes of large print books and over 400 videotapes, a canteen stocked with gifts and incidental needs, and even a federal post office. Today, over 350 members of all ages call the Grand Island Veterans Home their home. Nancy Klimek is the recreation coordinator for the Grand Island Veterans Home. It's really our feeling that when the member first comes into our facility, he's kind of just existing because we're providing all the, the basic cares for him, but he's lost so much and gone through so many changes. And so when that member crosses over the threshold of that door in the occupational therapy department, it is our feeling that he ceases to simply exist and begins really once again to live. It's very important for a lot of these members to have the opportunity to be productive. And they often don't feel like they can be productive anymore because their identity is so tied in with that American work ethic. And this is kind of their era. I mean, work, work, work is all they really knew. They did not learn a lot of leisure skills. They didn't value leisure. They valued work, and their self-esteem is very tied up in their productivity and what they contribute to society. There is no set time limits to be here, and uh, you can come and go as you please. You can work as long as you want to, and throw up the quitting time, you know, when they start cleaning up the shop area and uh, here in ceramics. And it's just ideal place to work. In ceramics, I'll do anything. I'm, I can do anything. And the woodwork shop, oh, I make a lot of little jigsaw puzzles. I make the little uh, 3D wooden activity sets. I made Easter baskets, wooden uh, tulip flowers on a wire stem. Usually the smaller stuff that you can do out of a wheelchair. What we do here in our department is provide our members with the opportunity to engage in what we call meaningful goal-directed activities. And what we do is use craft-oriented activity as a means of therapy for them. We like to think of our department as the place to come to to get away, uh, a place that they can come to to socialize, visit with other members and visit with staff, and a place that they can come to to enjoy themselves. But it also gives them a reason to get up in the morning, and it also keeps them off their beds. There's a lot of the members that uh, when we're closed on Sundays, Monday morning comes and they're lined up outside the door waiting to get in because this is a job for them. Usually when they first come into the home, they uh, leave us with the attitude, well, I'm, I'm here to die. I come here to die. And our job is to keep them off of their beds and keep those hands busy and their minds occupied and uh, um, once they see a finished item, well, then they have an altogether different outlook on life. But they really, there really is a purpose of for them being here. I kind of shied away from animals because they're they're pretty hard for me to paint. I have to work at it. But um, I thought, well, every picture is added interest with animals in them or people or something like that. And uh, so that's how I got started painting those. And I, they, a lot of times they're sold before I even get them finished. Somebody will go by and it's something different. They see a lot of people from the outside too. Uh, maybe they'll be sitting here and somebody from their hometown just happens to pop in to buy something. So socialization is a great big 
factor down here uh, because there's always people that they can visit with. The look on their faces when they sell something and you turn around and give them the money for it, it's just fantastic. You know, there's such a good feeling that you get from being able to make something with your own hands and putting it up for sale and having somebody actually come along and buy it. <laughs> But here's the problem. Space in the two areas has become a premium. Presently, there are 72 members attempting to work in the department. Very simply, we are out of room. It's a two-fold problem. We have members that want to work in the wood shop, but because of the congestion there, they can't work in the wood shop. We have to deal with some real safety issues there. We have a lot of great equipment there for the members to produce the type of products they want, but we don't have the space for them to work there safely. And so those members are being forced to go into the other area, which is basically geared towards ceramics and other types of activity. And so they, in essence, bump those members that are skilled nursing care type members that cannot safely work in, in the wood shop, that have to depend on the ceramic or other activities. They kind of bump those people because then there's no space for them. The congestion then gets worse in the ceramic area of the OT department. Now, like there's uh, Clarence Clark and me and Ken and Fred and Doug Mitchell back there, you know, why pretty crowded machinery in there and all, you know, why somebody's going to get hurt. If we could handle more of the, the skilled type people down here that are in the wheelchairs, if we had the room for them, you know, we could be giving them that quality of life. <laughs> But we have the solution. We want to enclose this space between the woodworking shop and the auditorium. This will more than double our usable woodworking area and allow twice as many members to use the facilities at the same time. Also, it will permit those confined to wheelchairs and access to the facilities and take pressure off the other areas as well. With state and federal budgets trimmed to the bone, there are simply no resources available from government. We have begun a $125,000 fund drive to expand the occupational therapy department. Your tax-deductible gift will be used to expand the facility and any surplus will be used for equipment and furnishings. I myself, and I'm not the only one, but just speaking for myself, have donated some of the stuff I've made. I just got done making some uh, wrong ornaments and uh, I made 14 pieces and it'll come the equivalent of about $105 which will go to the building fund. This is a capital construction drive and your tax deductible gift will be used to expand the facilities with any surpluses used to purchase furnishings and equipment. We know that these are tough economic times and it's hard to say yes to yet another campaign. But if we all give a little, many will gain a lot. After all, we may be contributing to our own future as well.